Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend at Johnson County Community College, and the subject of today's short screencast will be your final project in Web 110. If you're in my Web 110 class, you know that the class ends with an important final project that demonstrates all of the HTML elements, attributes, and CSS constructs that you've learned in this class. As soon as you pick your final project subject, I ask that you post that subject here in the discussion thread for your class claiming that topic. The reason I ask this is that I'd like every student to pick a different topic. Now you can pick any topic in the world of web development and on the content tab in the final project info list, I provided a spreadsheet called final project that has two tabs. One tab is a list of suggested subjects from which you can choose or add your own. And the second tab is the grading rubric. Once you pick your subject, you can start reading the grading rubric and learn what I'm expecting on the final project. But it's always helpful to actually see a final project. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of a great final project and a good final project. This is a great final project. If I were to compare the pages of this website, against the grading rubric and what has been requested here on the grading rubric, this final project would rate 100. And so I want you to see about how much content is on each of the pages. You don't have to make them extremely long, but I want enough content on each page so that naturally a scroll bar appears. And you'll see in the grading rubric that you do need an example of a table. You need an example of an ordered list. You'll need an example of an unordered list and many other things that we've learned in this class. And that was all provided on this particular project. The project's also two columns, which is part of the grading rubric. In addition, the grading rubric asks that you have a top navigation as well as a bottom navigation, which is very common particularly when we get into responsive websites that respond to different sizes of screens because they can get quite tall and long on smaller devices. So this is the home page where you'll define in a nutshell the subject that your final project is based on. In this case, the final project was based on CMS, Content Management Systems, so the very first thing on the home page was defining what a content management system is. The other pages of your final project are more flexible. You have more choices, but you are going to want to gather your content for your final project, the articles, the images, over the course of the semester. Leaving this until the last week will probably not give you the results that you want. If done well, this can be the cornerstone in your electronic portfolio and help you get a job. Here's the third page of this particular project. You'll have a credits page where you'll list every website and reference that you gleaned material from for your final project. And you'll also have a form page. Most people choose a contact page where you can demonstrate some of the elements of a form that you'll learn in that chapter, such as the drop down list, appropriate use of a checkbox and appropriate use of radio buttons. So this was a fantastic final project. Here's another final project. It was good. What I want you to see is that the home page also described the topic. That should be on the top of your home page. What is your subject and what is the definition of your subject? This person not only defined the subject, but showed what mobile first development means in a nutshell with this nice image. And it means designing for a small device first and then adding content as you have more real estate and screen space. In both cases, the sites are responsive, meaning if I resize this browser, you can see the screen changing to meet the demands of a mobile first. You can see that the screen is responsive. This project too was responsive. If I resize the screen, you're going to see how the content changes and resizes to become more readable and easily accessible depending upon the size of the viewport. So that will be a big part of your final project too. Someone asked me, are we going to learn about how to build websites for mobile devices? And the answer is yes. We'll learn about responsive web design and how to make your web page display well in any size viewport by the end of the class. And your final project should demonstrate that as well. Thank you.